Hi, I'm Dee Dee Emmons, um, and I'm the author of Wild Flavors, One Chef's Transformative Year Cooking at Eva's Farm. It's about a 70-year-old fabulous farmer named Eva Samaripa. And today I'm going to make sunchoke bisque. Sunchokes are um, a tuber or a root vegetable, and they taste a little bit like um, artichokes. This recipe comes from Kristen Costa from the Bay Club in Mattapoisett, Massachusetts, and I just had to take her recipe into the book because it is just such the pure essence of sunchoke. We don't even need to add any garlic or herbs or anything. It's really just about the sunchoke. So what we're first going to do is we're going to take some butter, which always helps, and we're going to add it to a little bit of olive oil that's already in the pan. And I've cut up some onions, and I'm going to add them. And then I have leeks, and the leeks, um, it's, it's really uh, important to try to use the whole leek in the name of sustainability, um, and also just in terms of, you know, economy. So what you need to do is, um, for this recipe is to cut off all the white part of the leek and pretty much we've done that and then you just want to save this um, there's two two leeks or well, even if you're just using one if you want to use this for another recipe I would recommend just thinly slicing it and adding it to just like this raw to already cooked rice or to an already made pasta dish almost as a garnish so I'm going to add my white leeks and I'm going to turn that heat up a little bit and I'm going to cook the onions and the leeks until they brown or caramelize. This takes about 15 minutes over medium low heat and the, the thing about it is that you don't want to stir constantly. You don't want to obsess about this. You want to really leave the onions and the leeks alone for four or five minutes at a time. That way it will um, the caramelization will really begin to form and if you keep moving the, the onions and leeks it won't form. So the onions and leeks are browned or caramelized and we're going to add the sunchokes as well as some potatoes. So there's our russet potato. It really doesn't matter what kind of potato you use, although purple potatoes, Peruvian ones, would not be a good choice. Clash with the color of the sunchoke. And here are our sunchokes. Now, this is a sunchoke um, before it gets washed. And oftentimes at the supermarket, you'll get them washed. But the best case scenario is when you don't get them washed because that way they'll, they'll last so much longer, the dirt, you know, to protect them. What I do is I just rinse them under warm water with a little brush, like a, even a dish brush um, or a mushroom brush. And then I just, I just under the warm water, I just uh, brush off the dirt and then that's it. You don't need to peel sunchokes. Some people do peel sunchokes. Um, a little history of, of how they came to, to be named. Um, sunchokes originally were called sunroots from the Native Americans. And then the Italians came over um, and they called it girasol, which means sunflower. And in fact, sunchokes are in the sunflower family. But somebody misheard the word girasol and they said, ah, Jerusalem, I love these Jerusalems. So the name for another 50 years was Jerusalem. And then Samuel Champlain from France came over and said, oh, I proclaim that this tastes like artichoke. So I want to call this the Jerusalem artichoke. So the sunchoke is neither from Jerusalem nor is it an artichoke, but it tastes like an artichoke. So I'm going to add the chicken broth, but you could just as easily use water or vegetable stock. And then we're going to just let this simmer for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes and the sunchokes become very soft. It's a good time to add salt. So the sunchokes and potatoes have softened and we're ready to buzz it. I'm using an immersion blender, a great tool if you like soups. But you can also do this 
in a food processor in batches as well as a regular blender. So, um, so what I'm going to do is just buzz it. I am going to add a little more salt and pepper. It's important to taste, which I will in a second. And I'm just going to ladle it into the bowl. And if it's a first course, then that's plenty. And here's a little bit of the green leek revisited for a garnish. And there you have it, sunchoke bisque.